Hello, ladies and gents, boys and girls, cunts and bitches. Welcome to Documented Bits with your boy, Jack. Once again, Josh E.T., Josh Thomas, Josh is not on the episode because your boy's still in Liverpool and will be in Liverpool until May-ish. So it will be either me doing a solo boy uh, me and a guest, perhaps Karnan, who we've seen in the past, or Matteo even, who we've seen in the past, or it could be Josh doing a solo boy, or Josh with a guest, we don't know. But there won't be me and Josh together on a podcast until around about May. <coughs> and by the way, if my uh, audio levels go a bit fucky, it's because I don't have headphones. I've only got these earphones that stretch to about here. And that's not going to do because look at that. It's fucking... It's not good. So, um, I today, just sort of, I want to talk about something that I've been doing the past few months. Uh, more intensely the past few weeks. And that is making a film. Yes, indeed, I've been making a film for uni called Reverie. And I've been doing it with my production group, my boys. And so far, it's going pretty dang alright. If you're watching the video version, I'll throw in a few clips in the lab. But if you're audio... Like if you're on Spotify, or Apple Podcasts, or CF Network, or Podbean, any of them, well, you're shit out of luck. Unless you go to YouTube, and you can watch the audio, or you can watch the video version, and it'll be class. It's free, as are all the other uh, platforms, and yeah, you get a audio and a visual experience but it's up to you uh, we had we did a shoot yesterday in a place called Roxy Ballroom uh, shout out to our boy Cameron Proven for sorting that for us uh, if you want to go visit Cameron at Roxy Ballroom uh, it's the one on Rainford Square down by Cavern Walks and Cavern Club on Matthew Street and all them so if you want to go check that out, it's actually a very cool place. As we're trying to, we're trying to show in the film. Uh, shit! I just realised I'm not. I haven't got a timer on, so I don't know how long I've been going. Uh, right, got one on now. We're all good. Um, yeah. Please, not even please. Do just if you want to, if you're looking for a nice wee date night or whatever. Uh, go to Roxy Ballroom, or even if you're looking to have fun with your friends, fun with friends. Uh, it's a bar. You can get food. Oh, bar. You can get food there. You can play bowling. You can play mini golf. There's ping pong tables, pool tables. Uh, what else have they got? They've got shuffleboard as well. They've got a basketball machine, and they've got a very cool VIP room. Um, uh, again, if you're watching the video version, I'll throw a few clips into there of the VIP room. It's fucking cool. They got a class big, like Jimi Hendrix, uh, like painting thing on the wall, and it's all UV. It looks fucking sweet. Uh, so yes, that is in Liverpool as well. I forgot to mention. So if you're in Liverpool, uh, even if you're just visiting for the day. You can go to Roxy Ballroom, and this isn't at all sponsored or anything by Roxy Ballroom. It's just they let us use their <coughs> they let us use their facilities for free, and we are very very grateful to them. And I just want to sort of give them a wee shout out. But anyway, back to the actual filming. Yeah, we were filming at Roxy Ballroom, and. I mean, the night before, I was stressed to the dick. Like, I got fuck all sleep. Because basically, we needed 
Need a load of extras and we couldn't get a load of extras because somebody, not gonna name names, dropped the ball and they can get extras for us. Uh, so it was up to me the night before to try and get extras. I got I put up a post on our Facebook page, an actor's Facebook page, from our Liverpool actor's Facebook page, uh, basically just being like, right, we need fucking extras and we need loads of them. And guess how many people came back to me? I'll give you five seconds. Five, four, three, two one but but no we got two we got two from that facebook group but then um because we had two or we have two actors as well that were filming that we were able to film yesterday they're sort of like our two main actors uh we put into our we like uh production group chat or well, i put into our we production group chat basically oh shit i'm sorry Sorry for hitting the mic. Um, yeah, we asked, or I asked, uh, like, if you have any mates that are willing to be extras in the film, uh, they're not gonna get paid or anything, just like you guys. Yeah, we're not paying our actors. Uh, but you will get a nice little, uh, official cinema credit. Uh, that's another thing. Our film's gonna be screened in the cinema in Walton Cinema. However, not to the general public, no, no, no. Uh, we're gonna be screening the film to the rest of our class. So that's pretty nice, pretty cool. We get to see our film on the big screen. Uh, that's brought about it, its own fucking problems with, uh, actually you may as well just explain this. We had a rough cut the other day, and for people who don't know what a rough cut is, it's basically, or well, it's called like a rush as well. It's something that's, I've been, t- no. it's something that I've been told happens quite a lot, or like it's common in the film field to have a rush or a rough cut, where basically this is done before the, like, before the like final final product has been made whenever you get all your footage and you do a basic look or timeline of what you want it to be and then you put it to an audience um, probably the producers because you know they're the boys that are paying for the film so they're going to want to see it uh, yeah so you get all them in the room you play the film as a rough cut no color correction, nothing done. Just the raw footage, raw uh, narrative and narration. Uh, I'm not going to go into the difference between narrative and narration because I'll take too long. Uh, two wee seconds. Yeah. Um, and basically, you just let them see it, and then at the end, they will give you feedback on maybe you could tweak this, maybe you could reshoot that, make it a wee bit better, don't be that shit, make that better, and bosh, that's what a rough cut slash a rush is, and I forgot where I'm going with this, no, remember, oh no, turn you off, no location sounds, um, yeah, so we played a rough cut, and the projector that we were using, because it was a shitty lecture room with a shitty projector projecting it onto a wall, so it looked really bad. It looked incredibly dark. Because in the film we have two shots that sort of need a bit of light, but we brought it down to make it look more cinematic. And in the edit on our like monitor, in <coughs> in our like. Uh, editing suite it looked fucking fantastic it was probably like uh, aesthetically our best looking film yet and this was only two scenes we had uh, two very short scenes and it looked fucking unreal my lighting's actually really good today god damn 
uh, it looked really, really good. And then we put it on the shitty projector and it looked awful. It was really, really dark. We had things like one of the shot was like an over the shoulder from the character's shoulder looking down and she was holding the Polaroid. And you need to be able to see what's on the Polaroid because it comes up again later on in the film. But on that shitty projector, it was just pure black. Couldn't see a thing. Um, now I'm questioning why I'm telling you this. Like what, would the, pur- what the purpose was. Uh, anyway, that's just a thing. It looked really shit. So we need to now in the edit put something called a broadcast safe filter on everything which in the edit makes it look shit but apparently it's supposed to help whenever you put your film onto a or into a cinema projector it's supposed to make sure that uh, the darks aren't too dark and the lights aren't too light uh, which I'm worried it'll just make it look washed out but hey what can you do um, so anyway to bring it back to uh, filming in uh, Roxy Ballroom this was yesterday the 27th of February uh, yeah we had a fuckload of extras well not a fuckload we had like 6 or 7 and then we had our two actors and we had me and Kynan, both the actors, and Kynan was a cameraman. I did a bit of camera yesterday because we booked out like three or four cameras. We had like a multicam setup. Again, if you don't know what a multicam is, it's sort of in the title. You basically <coughs> you're basically using multiple cameras at once for the one shot. Uh, so I had to hop on one of the cameras for a few shots then we had Sean our sound guy Uh, we had Ryan and Matteo as well then Matteo was sort of working with the extras making sure they were all good and made sure that they needed to be or that they were where they needed to be Ryan was sort of doing the same Uh, but as I said we had a multicam setup so we needed pretty much everyone bar Sean to be on cameras, and I say bar Sean because he was doing sound. Uh, um, where was I going with this? I my fucking my head these days is all over the place because of this film. Uh, like yesterday, uh, I was trying to do like three or four things at once, just because I'm sort of like. Not the leader of the group, but uh, I don't know how to say this without sounding like I'm sucking my own dick. I do the most, basically. So I was running about making sure our actors were all good, they knew what they were doing, they knew their lines, and they made just basically. Uh, <laughs> there was a rewind sound, there were sound. Uh, I was making sure that they were comfortable with what they were doing. Um, we were all good there. And then I was also trying to do lighting. And then I was also trying to set up a camera. I was also trying to give the crew directions. And then I was also making sure extras were in the right place, like aesthetically. And then I've, I was also being told by like Roxy staff and stuff, you need to move from here to here at this time. You need to do this, you need to do that. Don't get in this person's way. Uh, if you need this, ask this person. If you need that, ask that person. And then my own general... Well, as well, I was sort of thinking about... Actually, this is something I want to bring up. Both me and Kynan are directors on this. Which is good, because we both have different views. We can... If I say an idea for a scene, Kynan, because his background is with cameras, he'll be able to tell me, no, that won't work because that camera movement is too difficult or fucking nigh on impossible. And then if Kynan comes up with an idea for a shot or whatever, because I'm, uh, I've got more of an editing background and I am also editor on this film, um, 
I'll be thinking more this needs to happen at the start or the end of this shop because there's a shop before where like say for example camera was moving from left to right uh, I'm not sure anyway it's moving from left to right so on this shot we need to either start it off with the camera moving right right to left or right forward whatever it needs to start from the right because whenever you take that into the edit it will look really fucking weird if you're going left to right left to right and that's sort of where me and Kynan butt heads a wee bit because right put it this way individually all the shots that he takes are fucking amazing like aesthetically, their class, the way they're set up. Mm. Oh. Perfecto. But I will then take them into the edit and it will be impossible for me to edit these things together. Like if it was a YouTube video or we were just making like a wee montage, it would be really, really good. Throw on some music, cut it to the beat of the music, it's grand. But whenever you're trying to tell a story, um, like especially if you've got dialogue you need all the shots to flow into each other so that's sort of where I come from whenever I'm setting up shots like I'm not <sighs> it's not that I'm not concerned with how aesthetically they look but my main concern is does this shot uh, fit in with the previous shot and what we're trying to shoot after because like as well uh, Kynan whenever he's shooting he has no real concern for what what's coming next he just thinks right get this shot out of the way make this look amazing and then we'll figure out the next one whereas I like to have everything planned out i like to know what we're starting with what shot are we doing next what are we doing next what are we doing next what are we doing next just so from the very start i can sort of say to Kynan or whoever's working the camera right if we're doing this shot now and this is the next shot you need to end it in a certain way whereas with Kynan's way if you do the shot just as it is and then worry about the one after because you're in the moment it's sort of you're sort of have to cater to what happened in the last one and if you keep on doing that for every single shot it's it can get difficult and like it can take a lot of time don't get me wrong Kynan is a fantastic director like speaking to the actors and everything, he's much better at that than I am. Like he's very, he's a better people person than I am. And the way he sets up shots and everything, the way he makes things look, <clears throat> is class. Like he's magic with a camera. I can do what he does with a camera. But I am better at sort of looking at continuity and planning and looking at things from different viewpoints from like an editing viewpoint and I mean prime example in one of the very in fact the very first few shots of the Roxy's scene uh, we have a shot of our main character Alex coming through the door and we've got a camera uh, like a on a close-up of the back of another character Ben's shoulder who's sitting at a table so the camera's coming over his shoulder his shoulder and side of his face is in view or in focus even and the background is shit apologies the background is out of focus and then when the other ca character Alex comes through the door into Roxy's then the focus shifts from his shoulder into the background where Alex is and the lightning that, it's quite light, it's quite nice and then the next shot 
is Alex sitting down and having a conversation with Ben. And I wasn't really there for these couple of shots because I can't remember what I was doing. Uh, I think I was sorting someone out. But yes, here's what it was. I was giving uh, the girl who plays Alex direction on what she should do whenever she comes in. So I wasn't there really for the setup of the shot. So if or the shots even so it was more Kynan that was doing that. So the first shot is lit really not really brightly but quite brightly. And then the shot after that is really dark. So I then brought that into uh, the edit today. I had the first shot, looked very nice. I was like fucking right, looks unreal. Got the next shot in and it was incredibly dark. S there was such a big contrast that I, I basically couldn't have these two shots together because they looked so different and they're supposed to be sort of in the same place. Um, but in, if you took them as individual shots, they look fucking amazing. <clears throat> But I'm at Kynan, if you are listening to this, this isn't me talking shit about you, it's just something that happened. And we can work on this, we've got a shoot in the same place next week. Uh, we got l quite a lot done in Roxy's this week, so there's not even that much to do next week. It's mostly just uh, the ending of the scene and transitioning into the next scene. Uh, didn't I go on to this by talking about something else? I feel like that the thing I was talking about was quite important, but I forgot what it is now. Um, yeah, I just want to say as well, if you're interested in following like the progress of the film, you can follow my uh, film page on Instagram. Uh, Moon Productions. I plug this at the end of every single episode. Moon Productions, two zeros instead of the O's and Moon. I've been posting sort of like behind the scenes and clips from the film onto that page. Or if you don't, if you don't want to give me a follow for whatever reason, maybe you're a dickhead, maybe you're a cunt, maybe you just don't want to follow another page because you're one of those cunts that worry about like. Oh, I need to have this many people following me for, like, me to follow this many people. Go fuck yourself, you stupid dumb cunt. Uh, if you do do that and you are like that and you don't want to follow my page, then follow the fucking hashtag. Hashtag Reverie Film Official. I'll have this up bottom of the screen, round about here-ish. And yeah, you can follow that, you can get all the exclusives behind the scenes. We had a behind the scenes guy at uh, at Roxy's, like, an, like a proper, like the whole time he was just taking photos. And I think taking videos as well, of us sort of doing our thing, making scenes, like fucking lining shit up, setting up equipment. He got quite a few shots of me, caught him around the corner of my eye a few times, taking a few shots. And those pictures will be available, he said, in the next few days. Uh, he's going to give me a wee Dropbox, Dropbox link. And I'm very excited to see them, because I've never... I've never got a proper, uh, like, photo shoot of me filming. I've got, like... Few people have taken pictures of me, like filming or doing photography or whatever. But the boys seem professional, so I'm very excited to see his shots and how good they make me look. So that'll be nice. Um, what else I've got to talk to you about? Because I'm doing this by myself, and. Got no one to bounce off. I've got no one to tell me what I need to do. So I'll have a wee look through my notes, see if I need to bring up anything. Um
Here's something actually. Last night, I was just sitting in my flat after our uh, big shoot at Roxy's. Uh, I, was, I was really, really tired last night <clears throat> after coming in from the shoot. Like we started the whole day, she started at half nine. Um, we didn't leave Roxy's, I think, until three. Didn't get home until four. So I was. It wasn't even like I was physically tired, I was just mentally exhausted because I was doing so much stuff throughout the day. Adrenaline was going because I'm quite a shy person. Don't really like talking to people. And then being in charge of people was incredibly stressful for me. Uh, that's why I say like Kynan is a much better people person. He's much better at giving direction and being in charge of people than I am. So I'm happy to have him as a uh, co-director on this project. Uh, I, so very, very mentally tired whenever I got in. Couldn't be fucked cooking or anything, so just got nice wee Domino's. Uh, the fucking... What pizza was it? It wasn't the meat feast. It's one with, like, a load of meat on it. And, uh, red onion and things like that. Let me just get up the order here. It doesn't really matter, but... May as well fill it up the time, shouldn't we? Shouldn't we? I wish Domino's would stop being such a dickhead. Let's see. There's a mighty meaty. Mighty meat. Mighty large. Mighty meaty. And mighty min, min. Fucking hell. I think I'm having a stroke. It's a large, mighty meaty pizza. Bottle of Diet Coke. Actually, this Diet Coke. Uh, and like a free garlic pizza bread thing. And I watched The Office. And I played FIFA and listened to The Office Ladies podcast. Uh, quick wee shout out. Not endorsed or anything, but I like the podcast because I like The Office. And Jenna Fisher and Angela Kingsley. Kingsley or Kingsley? Can't remember which it is. Uh, they do a very good job on that. And it's cool listening to all the BTS and shit like that. But anyway, I'm straying away from what I was me- meaning to talk about. Um, yeah, I think it was after I'd done all that, I was listening to, uh, the Blind Boy podcast again, Kraken podcast, and a weird beep went off in the flat. It sounded like, if, if you're a football fan, if you've ever been to, uh, I think Anfield has it, with the turnstiles whenever you go through, they make like this beeping noise. And a beeping noise. It's like beep boop. Like that sort of thing. And then about maybe four or five seconds later, like it was a decent week out between this, an alarm that I've never heard before starts going off. And then all of a sudden just stops. And then again, hear the beep boop. Another four or five seconds passes, and then the fucking alarm goes off again. I don't know what the fuck is going on, too. Like, right now, I don't know what the fuck was going on. Never heard that beep. Never heard that alarm before. And it just starts fucking happening. So it was a wee bit fucking spooky and weird. Hasn't happened since. So. I don't... I don't fucking know. Um... Might as well talk about this film more. I don't think I've ever talked about what the film's actually about or done any promo really on this podcast. Um, the film is, in fact, actually, I'll get a wee sub- our uh, official synopsis up. Uh, if there's any uh, producers writing listening to this episode, what up? You wanna fucking hire me or something? Uh, let's see here. What folder did I have it in? Good time. Bosh. Here we go. Synopsis. (laughs) 
no, no, fuck this. And basically, the film is about uh, a girl called Alex and her best friend, Sophie, uh, like three weeks before like the narration of the film, the timeline, timeline of the film starts. Her best mate, Sophie, has uh, passed away. Rip. Uh, GBNF. Uh, let's all cry for Sophie. L. A. C. F. S. L. A. C. F. S. For Sophie. Um, and then Alex is obviously fucking depresso. So through her depression and the grief, she develops insomnia. If you don't know what insomnia is, it is the lack of ability to sleep. Where you find it very hard to sleep. And basically, the premise is that her insomnia has gotten so bad that she barely sleeps. But whenever she does sleep, she can't control it. So she always, like, black out. And in these sort of blackouts, she has these dreams. And they start off quite... Like, you can really tell it's a dream. And they're sort of weird. And the way we're doing this is... We're going to have the dreams. We're going to have two colour palettes. One for whenever she's awake. And one for whenever she's in dreamland. Uh, So we're going to have two different colour palettes. And then we're going to have the dreams. are going to be very symmetrical as well. And the... Like normal, she's awake times, or just gonna be, they're gonna look normal. And anyway, she has these dreams, and they start off like really, this is a dream, uh, like really obviously dreamland. And then as the film goes on, and her so- insomnia gets more and more intense, and these dreams get more and more freaky, she doesn't. Uh, like at the start they're quite nice because she can talk to her mate again and she feels all nice and then as the film goes on uh, Sophie starts to change This Sophie's the mate that died and she starts to get more like violent and creepy and weird and then as well as well as this happening the dreams become more and more realistic and by the end a sort of thing of you can't tell whether this is a dream or whether this is reality um, because we can't tell that Alex can't tell that either so I don't want to spoil it like but basically yeah that's what happens uh, it gets more and more realistic and to the point where Alex can't tell whether it's dream or reality and then she does something super fucking crazy and gets arrested for it but we feel bad for her because she's just fucking sad. And that's it, really. And this film is called Reverie. Now this film, or Reverie, will be out on... Let me check. I put it on a poster. Uh, where are you, you fucking bet you? Might be on my phone, actually. Wait, I was looking at it yesterday. Where did I fucking go? It was on my phone actually yesterday. Here we go. It'll be available on the 24th of April 2020 on my YouTube page, Moon Productions. That's two zeros. Or no, do O's as O's in Moon. Uh, and it will be on my Instagram, Moon Productions with two zeros instead of the O's. Um, so please, everybody, go check that the fuck out. Because um, it'd be really nice because it is our final film as a group, as we're in our final year of uni. And so far, it's been the most. Actually, I wouldn't say it's been the most enjoyable. It's been. It's the best film we've done so far. The other ones were probably more enjoyable because it was just us as a group. And we're just sort of having a laugh. 
Whereas this one we're taking proper seriously. We've got actual actors, we've got extras, we've got actual fucking like uh locations that we need to needed to book. And yeah, it's our most professional film to date. And I'm very happy with it. It's going very well so far. Uh as this podcast has. And I'm gonna fucking wrap it up because my stopwatch is saying we are uh, 32 minutes in, but obviously, as you saw, I started the stopwatch late. So we're probably, I'd say, about 40, 45 minutes in. So yeah, this has been an episode of Documented Bits. It hasn't been funny or fucking exciting or whatever, but it's been fun for me. And hopefully you've learned something. So yes, you can follow Documented Bits uh, on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Instagram and Twitter are just at Documented Bits, and Facebook is Documented Bits. If you want to listen to the podcast, if say you're watching this on YouTube, uh... And you just want to sort of have it as an audio thing in the background as you fuck about in your phone or whatever. You can find it on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, uh, Podbean, CF Network, and Castbox. And vice versa, if you want to... If you're... <coughs> fuck. Blech. If you're listening to it and you want to watch it, I should probably put the... Should, probably should have put that at the start. This goes for all the all the other episodes as well. If you're listening to it and you want to watch it, go to YouTube. Just again, documented bits. Uh, all the episodes are on there as video versions, except for the first one, because I don't know, it didn't work. And yes, that's it. I believe. If you want to follow me on Instagram, it's at the old beard or at the all uh, uh, at the old beardo. Uh, that's at the the that's not two words it's either the or the um, at the underscore a-u-l-d underscore beardo or if you want to keep up with the film and all my film and photography adventures go to at moon productions it's two zeros instead of the o's in moon as I've explained many times uh, if you want to follow Josh on Instagram, he's at real Josh Thomas, or no, at real Joshy T. Sorry. If you want to follow Josh on Instagram, it's at real Joshy T. If you want to follow him on Twitter, he's at that Josh Thomas. And that's about it. So, good night or morning. Go fuck yourselves uh, and have a nice time, you lovely, lovely cunts. See you next time. Bye. Good night.